fill in the blank, you're not getting any younger, so. So make sure you're growing on the go. Hey you, yes you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, hey, any youngers, welcome back to another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. It's me, your host, Jen Glantz. One of the biggest things that have been sweeping our world during this crazy time in our world is at-home workouts. I, for one, have never been somebody to want to work out at home, mainly because I've been living in New York City for the past 10 years, and I don't even have room to do a lunge. Like, if I lunge in my living room, I'm already in my kitchen. If I lunge in my bedroom, I am already inside of my closet. Space is tight here. But regardless, even if I lived in a gigantic, a thousand million square feet mansion, I wouldn't work out at home. I am so not self-motivated when it comes to fitness. I can't even go to a gym. I need a workout class with other people by my side and hopefully a teacher that will scream things like, come on, you're slacking off. I see you. So when the recent months, when the whole working at home has popped up, there's been so many incredible instructors streaming things like Instagram Live where you can work out with them. I've given it a try and I've loved it. There's so many cool things you can do at home to build strength, to build muscle, just to feel good without any weights. Like a lot of these teachers use props you have in your house, like peanut butter jars or suitcases. There's so many cool things you're going to use that you can really build your home into a workout spot, even if you have no space. Like I've been working out at my home for the past couple of months and even though I have no space to do it, you find space, you make it work. Occasionally your foot hits the couch and you just deal with it. Today's guest is a superstar. I am so excited to welcome her on to the show. Sarah Grooms is a former Rockette. She spent 12 years performing. So cool, so incredible. She's also the host of the podcast On The Go podcast, which talks about the normal everyday of everyday people. And she teaches a bunch of different classes on the app, OB Fitness. On the episode today, she gives us tons of cool at-home workout advice and, of course, dives deep into her experience as a rockette. I hope you enjoy this episode, and if you do, please scroll down, give us a review, rate us five stars, help more people find this show, and as always, my dear friend, come hang out with us in the secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group. So many cool people in there. Love to have you. Love to see you. Until next time, all my love, Jen Glantz. This week's episode of the You're Not Getting a Younger podcast is brought to you by my new four-week personal branding program that is kicking off Monday, May 11th. Listen to what is going to happen in this program. Every single Monday, you will get a lesson on how to create your personal brand. We are going to build your personal brand from scratch. You're going to get real-time feedback, weekly assignments. By the end of the fourth week, you will have a solid, crisp personal brand to work with. We are living in uncertain times right now, and if all you have when I say personal assets is a one-page resume and a cover letter that sounds like it was written by a robot, that is not enough. You need a personal brand. You need to know your unique value, and you have to know what skills, what strengths, what story you are going to tell when you go after those things that you desperately want. You owe it to yourself. What's your story? How do you tell it in person and online? Let's get you a personal brand. Go on www.jenglance.com and you will find a link to the four-week personal branding program. It launches Monday, May 11th. Get a spot today. I'm waiting for you and I can't wait to help you build your own personal brand. How in the world would you introduce yourself 
to somebody you just met at a party? Oh boy, that is a hard one. And I feel like I've had time to prepare because I do listen to your show. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, I'm Sarah and I am an optimist ball of joy, or at least I try to be. <laughs> it's funny. I actually, we're just kind of almost talking about this, but I, I feel like I've kind of been defined by a job my whole life or jobs that I've done. And so I'm kind of trying to change that and flip the script a little bit more about the characteristics that I have and not by what I do. So yeah, I would stick with that. <laughs> I love that. And I also love that you started off with something that is a bit of a rarity that you're so optimistic because I feel like a lot of people, no, because a lot of people are, they're like, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a this. And you were like, no, here's my personality first. And I think that's such an incredible way to define yourself. So I love that. And I do want to talk a little bit about your job history in the past and also what you're up to now. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm sure when you tell people they light up and they ask you a zillion questions <laughs> is what your job was for the past 12 seasons, maybe 12 years. So share with us a little bit about your past. Yeah. Well, I, so I grew up in Columbus, Ohio. I lived there until I was, um, 18. I turned 19 the fall after I graduated high school, which I was actually, I grew up dancing my whole life. Um, you name it, whatever type of genre I did it. And I was all set to go to college at the University of Kentucky to go to business school. Just thought that I really wanted to change, kind of was burnt out from dance. And um, when I was 11 years old, cut back a little bit, I saw the Rockets for the first time here in New York City, now where we both live. And I was just enamored. One of my very first dance teachers from when I was a very young kiddo um, went on to be a rocket. I got to finally come see her when I was 11 and kind of told my mom back then that that's what I wanted to do, never really thinking that it would happen. Um, and then, you know, cut to being 18 years old, trying to make major life decisions when I still didn't know what I wanted to do. And my mom was like, you know what, let's, you can apply to the colleges, whatever, but you've said you've always wanted to do this. Why don't you just go audition and see, you know, what happens? And I'm, you know, being 18 and whatnot, I was like, whatever, it's never going to happen, but I'll go, like, we can go visit New York, you know? So I ended up auditioning. It was a two-day audition. I actually almost missed my graduation of high school back in Ohio because the weather was horrible here in New York. And I got back at like 1 a.m. the night before I was supposed to walk at my graduation. Um, ended up making it back, graduated high school and was like, great, I'm set to go to school, just like enjoy the summer. And then I got a phone call that completely changed my life and offered me my first contract as a Radio City Rocket um, on tour. So that kind of flipped everything up in the air and flipped my life around. Um, I accepted the contract and ended up going on the road. My first year I was in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so I was at the Grand Ole Opry for my first season and, uh, I had some big decisions I would say to make after that. Technically, we actually have to re-audition for our job every year as a Rocket. So when you're given a contract, it's only for that season. So I ended up going back to school the day after I finished my first contract um, and I hated it. I totally hated school. I had just been on the road, um, kind of touring, dancing, doing what I loved and found a, you know, a, a new passion for it because it was in the professional world, not necessarily just growing up in a studio. But um, I did that and went to school, decided I didn't want to go back. And I remember marching in to tell my my mom that I was moving to New York. <laughs> I don't know what where I got that bit of gust or guts from, but luckily somehow my mom let me do it. And almost 13 years later, I, I've done two years on, on the road with the Rockettes. And then I was here in New York for 10 years and finally actually just retired and hung up my heels. Um this last season. So this was my first holiday season, not doing the show, which was really weird, <laughs> but good. I got to take on a lot of new traditions. This is the first time I went home for the holidays in about 13 years. And yeah, in my heart, it was definitely the right decision to make. I am obsessed with your story because I think at age 18, it is so hard for anyone to know what the right decision is. And at age 18, to take on a professional job like the one you had, I mean, I'm sure in that first year, you know, I'm willing to say you grew up differently, but probably better than a lot of people who were freshmen in college. So take us back to that first year. I mean, what, or what are like the two things that you really learned and you grew up just by having a real professional job? Yeah, well, one I think was time management because it was my first time kind of being away from home and really learning, you know, 
listen, you have to get up. You're going to do your breakfast. You're going to make your breakfast. You're going to do your laundry. You have to be at work on time. And and we'll say something about the Rockettes is that it's a very regimented schedule. When they say that rehearsal starts at 10 a.m., you're not like easing into it by any means at 10 a.m. It's like you're there at nine because at 930 you're going through things on your own and 10 a.m. hits and you're running everything from the top. So it kind of taught me to grow up really fast. I think time management and kind of discipline was something that, you know, carried through my younger years, but then was very much at the forefront of my life then. And I will never forget my very first year. I was third in, I believe it was third in from the end. Um, I was one of the less tall girls and the woman that was on my tall side was twice my age with two kids. And I remember her looking at me and saying, get ready for like the ride of your life. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't know what she means. And, you know, it's, it was very interesting to see that, you know, I I ended up doing again, 12 years and I cannot even imagine taking care of two children and being a mother and having that job because it was the hardest job that I ever had. But again, I think it, it just put life into perspective and made me realize how fortunate and lucky I was because we all came from different walks of life and we all had different backgrounds. And um, it really just taught me how to, to work with other people and that, you know, we're lucky to be doing what we do on a daily basis, whether it's dancing or, you know, following our dreams in any way. Um, That first year taught me a lot. I think, you know, from the outside looking in, the women who are Rockettes to me are some of the strongest women out there. I mean, the physical strength it must take to dance like that. And I can only imagine the practices that you had to go through, you know? So what did you learn not only about physical strength, but also mental strength during your, your 13 years? Yeah. Well, um, a lot, again, I learned a lot. I think still to this day, you're kind of learning a lot, but it's, um, you come in and we like to say that, you know, we were all athletes stripping in diamonds. And I have an older brother who used to give me a lot of crap about dancers, not being athletes. You know, he played all the sports you can play growing up and I would always go to his games and support him and he would come to dance and support me, but he always gave me crap about being an athlete. And I think the, the first time that he came to radio city to see me, you know, you're, you're doing up to 16, 17 shows a week per cast. So there's two casts in New York because the show itself runs seven days a week. They're, can be up to five or six shows in a day. So you split the day's work that way each cast gets not only a day off throughout the week, but that, you know, each cast isn't doing six shows a day at 90 minutes a piece with no intermission. So I think when he came and he saw the show and how much went into it and how hard we worked day after day after day, you know, you can be doing two to three shows in one day and then going to rehearsal for four hours because you may have, you know, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade coming up or whatever it is. But I think on the outside, a lot of people see the bigger picture and the glitz and glam, but behind the scenes, you know, you're coming home, you're icing your feet, you're rolling your body out. You're trying to sleep because you get up and you have to go do it again. Or I should say you get to do it again, you know, the next day and the next day after that. So it's a lot of work physically on your body. I think it taught me how to treat my body as an instrument and not just, you know, eating crap all of the time, which around the holidays, I don't know about you, but I am like, give me the cake, give me the cookies, give me the cupcakes, all of it. And I really had to turn to that time of year to say, no, I need to fuel my body because this is what I do for a living. And I really want to take care of myself and then also have longevity within my career. Um, And then, so then getting on board with that, I really had to get my mental strength there as well, because I can tell you by the fourth show of your day, you do up to 300 kicks alone in one show. And on your fourth show of the day at 8 p.m. at night, sometimes it's not always easy to keep going. But you have to remember that, you know, at one point I was that little girl sitting in the audience on the last show of the day. And I was so excited to come. So you have to kind of treat every show like it's, you know, the first time you're doing something. And to get there mentally as well as physically, it takes a lot, but it's always so worth it. Oh, I could ask you a million questions about this, but I don't want to because this is not the real purpose of the show. But one thing that is on my mind is like, what was one of your favorite healthy things to eat that fueled your body and your mind and kept you feeling good? Because I think food and being an athlete or just even being healthy is so hard. And I doubt you had all the time in the world to cook all these crazy meals. So like, what were some of your go-to healthy foods? Um, Well, I will definitely say to start, Radio City took care of us pretty well. They would cater for us. So again, like you said, if we weren't, you know, I didn't always have the time to come home and cook. So in between shows there, we had a, you know, a room that had catering and all of that fun stuff that they would get 
healthier stuff for us that we can easily digest and use as fuel for the next show. But I always generally like to start my day with eggs and it's something that that's just what my body seems to process and process well, you know, within a half hour of getting up. I know everyone's body is a little bit different. Um, coffee was always my go-to in the morning too. I needed it <laughs> maybe for my sanity as well, but yeah, eggs were kind of how I started my day. Cause it was something that I could always tell, you know, if I just got something on the go on the way to work that maybe wasn't necessarily nutrient dense by the second number, we did a, a tap number that's about seven minutes long as the second number of the show. The first number was pretty quick and then the second one was long. And I could always tell if I fueled, you know, right the well, right and well the night before, as well as for breakfast that morning, if I was going to be okay, because during that second number, I would either get really hungry if I ate crap or I was like, you know what, I feel good. I'm in this. I can get through this show. And um, I treated my body well with food. So I could tell kind of where I was going to be for that first show of the day and how I kind of set myself up to succeed based on how I took care of myself outside of that. Mm, it's so incredible. I mean, I, I have recently really just given into the idea of how powerful food is and being thoughtful about what you put in your body. And I know, especially right now during the time when we're all staying home and cooking for ourselves, not digging into like the cookies and the processed <laughs> stuff because you don't feel good. I mean, everyone's already a little upset right now anyway, and now you're packing on all of these processed things and you're going to feel even more crappy. So, you know, I think it's so important, the lesson that you learn through that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, what? it's so true. I feel like as a kid, we had a, a classic McDonald's down the street from my dance studio. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of what we grew up on and didn't, I mean, didn't really know any better. That was just kind of, okay, well, you have to get to dance and you've got to have dinner. So this is what we're going to do. And the older I got, and I think living in New York City and I, I used to eat fast food all the time growing up in the Midwest. And now here in New York, I couldn't tell you the last time I had it. So it's, it's just interesting to see, you know, how you can fuel your body in different ways with what you put into it. So, Oh, absolutely. And I want to talk about your now. So you have a podcast called On The Go with Sarah Jo, and it's really cool because it highlights people who are living life on the go, but also what their idea of normal means, which I think is fascinating because you're right. Like the more people you ask about what their normal is, the more your perspective really expands. So my first question to you is, what does normal mean to you? <laughs> well, normal means not normal at all. I can tell you that much. So my, my time in the Rockets, I would say, was pretty regimented as far as my schedule goes. You know, six days a week, we would be in rehearsal 10 to 5, and then your show schedule was pretty much always the same. Now, outside of that for me, I like normalcy. I like to have a schedule, but I think something that I thrive on is is you know, getting to create that own normal for myself and saying, you know, I'm, I, I teach fitness now and, you know, I, I don't mind teaching, you know, private clients at 7am twice a week, but at 32 years old and the older I get, I realize just how, how much I need to prioritize my own self and my own sleep. So I get to make that schedule for myself and whether it's, you know, teaching a fitness class in the city or judging a dance competition on the weekend, um, normal looks different every week, but I do try to try to keep some sort of consistency within that. That way I'm not, you know, not giving myself a day off or I've, I've done that many times and I'm like, crap, all of a sudden I just didn't schedule days off in the week. How does that happen? So um, the normal for me is teaching some sort of fitness, I'd say at least five days a week, um, trying to get some classes in for myself and then, you know, doing the podcast and kind of my own passion projects on the side as well. You know, I think it's so interesting with your story is because you worked one job longer than most people, you know, like you worked <laughs> this one job for 13 years and no matter how long you work a job, it becomes you. So when you did, I love the saying that you hung up your heels, what kind of things did you have to do to figure out not only, you know, who you want to be and what you want to do, but, you know, you had all these different projects you wanted to pursue, like the podcast was something you wanted to do for a while. So how did you find the motivation to say, okay, I'm going to redefine my life as Sarah and, you know, tap into these things that I didn't have necessarily the time to do in the past 13 years? You know, it's, it's interesting because I, I think the strength and the resilience that we learned in being a rock at or that anyone that's done the job has learned along the way, um, something that they really, really kind of 
talked to you a lot about is, you know, you are resilient women. You show up day after day after day, no matter how you feel, no matter how tired you are, you guys are here and you're doing the work and you have this rigorous schedule and you are so strong, but you're also living your passion. Um, and so I think that's something I've kind of carried over into my now life, but it's, it's definitely been a, a very tough transition, I'd say, because my entire New York life up to this point, or I should say up to last September was Sarah the Rocket. And that's kind of how I was known in my hometown and from my dance studio. And you start getting text messages and emails, you know, July before the holidays even start of saying, hey, we're coming to New York. Can you take me backstage? And it's, I, I've really started to let that get to me of like, you know, people just see me as that. And and it's something I worked hard for. Don't get me wrong. I loved it. And it's something that I, I worked hard for every day that I had the job. But I think I needed to take a step back. And my advice that I always had gotten from girls before me that had hung up their heels was, you know, when you think you're done, just do one more year if you have that opportunity. And you'll know. And and I think I did. My family got to come my last season. And my mom sat really close in like the second row. And I just got to dance for her. And I think I knew in my heart that it was time and it's, I don't think there's ever going to be an easy time or a good time to walk away, but I know that I got to experience some really cool stuff while I was there. And I know that me walking away meant that some other girl was going to have her life changed in the most amazing way. So that being said, I, I made that call. I made that choice and said, you know, I really think it's time that I, I get to do and put some energy into the other things that I do want to do. One of which was the New York marathon. So I was supposed to run last year, I ended up, I've had a hip injury that I've dealt with for the last five years. I actually tore the labrum in my right hip um, during the Christmas show uh, five years ago. And so it, that was, you know, something to come back from another reason that I really kind of turned to fitness to take care of myself. Um, but yeah, I can't run the New York marathon in the fall and do the Christmas show. So I had to make a choice and say, you know, i what would it be if it came down to it? What am I going to choose? And I think in my heart, when I said, you know, the New York marathon, I knew that that was kind of my life and my gut telling me that a transition was happening, whether I was ready for it or not. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's been a wild ride. And I, I think it, all of that resilience and all of that determination that I, I learned in being a rock guide is something that I've carried over with me into life outside of that. And it's kind of helping me find my voice, especially with the podcast of, creating my own new normal, whatever that may be, and kind of rewriting the narrative for my story and not kind of what people think my narrative should be based on who I am or what I've done or accomplished throughout life. I am loving this. I think you are absolutely proof of something else that I love to tell people is that we are all more than just one thing. We are all more than just our job. And I think that you absolutely prove that as somebody who had a very rigorous, tough career, that there's so much more to you. And I'm happy and excited for you that now the world gets to see all of those different parts. And I can't wait to watch you run the New York Marathon this year. Oh Thank you. I'm a little nervous. I'm like, I'm actually supposed to be running Chicago and New York because <gasps> I, I deferred Chicago from last year. And then I actually uh, am running for charity for New York with my boyfriend and his sister. So I'm like, oh boy, what did I get myself into? Oh my God, you are such an inspiration. I, I can't, well, I used to not be able to run a mile, but now I'm training for a half marathon and I'm starting to love I'm loving running. Like I do four miles and I'm like loving it. Yeah. That's, it's, you know what? Very interesting because as a kid, I, I was on my eighth grade track team, definitely not high school, eighth grade. And we had to run a mile as our warm up. And I was like, I'm not running. I will go long jump and high jump for you, but I'm not running. And now all these years later, I'm like, let's run as many marathons as we can. What's happening? Is this what happens when we hit our thirties? Seriously. I, you know what? I definitely think it is something that when you're 30, it's like your 30 life crisis is like, yes. let's go run these marathons. Yeah. I want you to share with us your social media because one of the coolest things I saw on your social media recently was around your fitness training. And you know, a big thing that people are getting into right now is home fitness. And I think it's awesome. But I also think we, especially us New Yorkers, we can't invest in like these home gyms. And one of the posts I loved is you have a whole workout routine using a suitcase, which I am obsessed with. So <laughs> one, I want you to share with us your Instagram. And two, I want you to talk about some of the things you teach in the workouts you do, especially for people who don't have equipment at home. Yeah. 
So I uh, well, I have two Instagram accounts, I guess. The first one is at Sarah Grooms, S-A-R-A-H. I have the H in my name. And then Grooms, like bride and groom with an S. And then the other is at On The Go Podcast for all of that fun stuff. But um, yeah, I, I teach fitness. I got into it again because I had injured myself and I really just wanted to look at ways of being able to take care of myself. And then when I teach dance to kids, uh, I, I tend to incorporate a lot more strength work in that now because I never had that growing up, that aspect of growing up with learning my body and how to strengthen it so I could have longevity within a dance career. Um, so within that, you know, I travel a lot depending on whatever my schedule is and I don't, you know, I can't carry weights around everywhere I go. I live in a tiny studio. I don't have all the space for everything. So I work for a streaming company called Obey Fitness um, and the co-founders, Mark Vallette and Ashley Mills, I think are just two amazing people to work not only alongside, but they, they take care of their trainers, their instructors and their community. And they, they both kind of noticed a void in the market. Mark is from upstate New York. Ashley is also from Ohio. And they said, you know, we want to be able to bring these types of workouts that we so luckily get to experience on every other street corner in New York city, the soul cycles, you know, the, the Pelotons, the precision runs, whatever it is. Um, we don't necessarily have that in Ohio and we want to bring that to our families and to our friends because movement is not only great for our bodies, you know, to get our endorphins flowing and whatnot, but for our mental sanity as well. Like you can move a muscle and change a thought every time you get up and move your body. So um, I think the video that you were talking about, I, I don't know if everyone's heard of away suitcases, but um, being on the go a lot, they had asked me to kind of put together a little workout that I could do sitting in the airport. And one of the girls that that trains with us, Leslie, she, she's on the go all the time. So she's like, I need more airport workouts. What can I do? I'm sitting at the gate, sitting at the gate. It could be making more, you know, use of my time. Um, and it was so true. I was like, you know what, why don't we forget like spending all of this money on all these crazy props and things that, you know, maybe don't travel so well, why don't we just use what we have? And so we did like a whole little leg series and core series with just a suitcase that you can do in the airport or, you know, I think we can all, remember that we have our own body weight right like our body weight we can we can do an arm workout without any weights at all we can do a plank we can do some some leg work without all of the extra craziness that you know the the fitness industry wants us to get into but I think when we just come back down to it I personally don't I like going to a gym sometimes but that's not my thing to like go throw weight around all the time I think we all move our bodies in different ways that works for us like running or dancing, whatever it is. And so I think we just have to tap into what works best for us as individuals and then run with it. And Obe really figured that out in the sense of they offer all different types of classes, whether it's yoga or HIIT training or whatnot. And I only teach the classes that I feel comfortable teaching. And that's kind of the same with each instructor. And all of the classes are 28 minutes. They have 14 live classes a day and then thousands of on-demand classes. There's express classes that are 10 minutes. And I think especially now with what's going on with the coronavirus and, you know, everyone kind of being quarantined to their own homes, it's been a wonderful way to really connect with the community. There's a private Facebook group with Obey and you get to go on and just kind of talk to people and see how they're going, you know, going through everything right now and how we can all kind of just help each other through together. It doesn't always have to be this like, hey, we're just workout friends and then we go away. Like you can actually connect with people. I think the power of social media can be so awesome in that sense. And, you know, we have some accountability friends where I'm like, hey, hey, Leslie, I'm going to show up tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'm going to do a workout for my house. If you want to do it with me, like let's FaceTime and do it together and and stay sane together. So I love it. Not obey. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's awesome. And I'm like, you know, I was so not into home workouts, but the past week, it's all I've really been yeah. able to do. And I love it. Like, you know, even in my tiny New York apartment, we find room to do burpees and stuff. And like, it's sort of cool. So I'm all yeah. about it. Going to check it out. Going to check you out on there. Love the suitcase yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You have been amazing. I want to end this just like I end all of the interviews. So I'm going to ask you, fill in the blank. You're not getting any younger. So you're not getting any younger. So make sure you're growing on the go. Oh, I love that so much. Please tell our listeners where they can find out more about you and your podcast. Uh, you can find out more on me again at Instagram at Sarah Grooms or at on the go podcast. And then my personal podcast on the go with Sarah Joe is on Apple or iTunes and Spotify. And if you guys want to, uh, just reach out, send me a DM. I'm always happy to help people if they want to get started with Obey or have any questions on 
I guess whatever it is that I do, I'm always just a message away. So thanks for having me, Jen. Amazing. This was great. Thanks for being on the show. Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.